In another broadcast, we covered the failed prophecy from a radio preacher about May 21st, 2011, and his prediction about an October 21st, 2011 doomsday. It addressed how to know false prophets from God's servants, but also much more. Now, what is the truth of Bible prophecy? Jesus Christ, along with Old Testament prophets and other New Testament writers, spoke about specific events and trends that would precede His return. There are about 70 that occur in sequence culminating in the return of Christ. Some are larger than others, but all are provable. The purpose of this unique series is to briefly and simply reveal in sequential order the biggest 26 of these events. They form a foundation to understand the answers to the most crucial questions about the future. I will be plain about what is coming. To defeat widespread confusion, no punches can be pulled. The World to Come The Restored Church of God presents David C. Pack Author of 80 Books and Booklets Editor-in-Chief of The Real Truth Magazine, read by countless and growing numbers in every nation and territory of the world. In a violent age, full of bad news, answering life's greatest questions straight from the Bible and announcing the wonderful good news of the world to come. And now, David C. Pack. Many sense the world is hurtling toward calamity. Mankind is overwhelmed with every kind of trouble, evil, and ill. Terrorism, violence of every kind, pollution, overpopulation, political upheaval, religious confusion, and tremendous economic turmoil and decline, which suggests an even worse Great Depression, is ahead. New diseases keep emerging, and old ones are re-emerging. Famine is decimating entire segments of local populations, and incomprehensibly lethal weapons of mass destruction now threaten humanity. Hundreds of millions live in abject poverty, ignorance, and oppression, add rampant and worsening immorality and perversion across the world, and the never-ending cycle of hatred and unrest growing ever worse in the Middle East and earthquakes, volcanoes, and frightening weather patterns across the world, and devastating fires, tornadoes, hurricanes, droughts, and floods occurring more often and in more places. World conditions, events, and trends speak in frightening terms about how things could quickly turn in the wrong direction. Most do not know where or how to look within God's Word to get correct understanding of how events will play out sequentially within God's master plan for the end of the age. And instead of examining the hundreds of verses on prophecy themselves for proof, many are content to trust supposed experts. One-third of the Bible is prophecy, history written in advance. Over 80% of this future history is unfulfilled. Many major events must yet occur. God wants His servants to understand them. He has provided clues, necessary vital keys, to understanding what lies ahead for the world. Millions are wondering about the course of events and whether the world is on the brink of destruction. Jesus' disciples asked Him about final events. Notice. The disciples came, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world, meaning age? The idea of the world ending has been a subject of discussion and speculation, but also ridicule for almost 2,000 years. Is the world nearing Christ's return? Are these the end times? Can we know? Now begins examination of 26 events or conditions in sequence that precede Christ's return. We will count forward from the present. Here is number one, the worldwide breakdown of character. The Apostle Paul warned, in the last days perilous or dangerous times shall come. Here is what he describes. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, 
unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. This time has come, and it is worsening. Look around. People's conduct is changing. More authority figures are sounding the alarm that human nature is running wild. Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13 are parallel accounts of what is called the Olivet Prophecy. This crucial prophecy works in combination with the books of Revelation and Daniel and puts in sequential order events that span the entire period from Christ's first coming until his return 2,000 years later. Jesus explained exactly what would occur, what the serious observer should be looking for and expect. He presented in plain, clear language all key events and trends. These parallel Revelation 6 precisely. Matthew 24 provides clues which explain the symbols we will study in Revelation. You will see Jesus gives a direct answer to a direct question. Paul's last day's description culminates with, Evil men and seducers shall grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now number two. False Christianity grows much worse. First, Jesus told his disciples, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. Jesus goes straight to the problem that would exist. There would be many deceivers at work. He warned that the many will be deceived by those claiming to represent him, not the few. Are you concerned about this? The number of false teachers and false prophets is exploding, exactly as Jesus warned three times just in Matthew 24 would occur. Most are unaware of this deception and its impact throughout Christianity. Now let's read the exact parallel in the first seal of Revelation 6. Understand that what the Apostle John records is written in symbols, not plain language. He introduces the infamous four horsemen of the apocalypse. The Lamb, Jesus, opened one of the seals, behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. The white horse represents false Christianity. The rider is a counterfeit of the true Christ and a counterfeit of his second coming, described in Revelation 19, verses 11 to 16. There, the real Christ wields a sharp two-edged sword, while the false Christ is carrying a bow. Do not overlook this critical difference. Since false teachers, ministers, and false prophets have been plying their trade for centuries, Jesus' warning for the end of the age must involve a big increase in the power, prevalence, and influence of false Christianity. Now number three, war grows much worse. Following false Christianity, Jesus states, You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. This requires no interpretation. In fact, it is Jesus' interpretation of Revelation 6. As we read the remaining seals, we have Jesus telling us in advance what we are viewing, what the symbols mean. All mystery disappears. When the second seal opens, a red horse appears. When he had opened the second seal, there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. The same Jesus Christ would not give two different versions of what happens immediately before his return. He would not tell one thing to his disciples of the first century and another to those of the 21st century. This should be obvious. The sword of Revelation 6 is shown as an instrument of war and killing. This horse and rider take peace from the earth. 
When peace leaves, war remains, what Christ described in Matthew 24, 6. Wars have continued and grown steadily worse since the time of Christ's prophecy. This horseman represents the dreadful destruction of world war. Only in the modern age have weapons of mass destruction been available. The 20th century saw the two most devastating wars in history, with World War II far more destructive than World War I. We are in the last intermission preceding the truly greatest war, foretold to exceed anything before it. A sinning, rebellious humanity is reaching the end of its rope when war's potential cannot grow worse because it can erase all life from earth in one last blast of total destruction if Christ did not intervene and cut events short. Read Matthew 24, 22. Next is the brief inset number four. Jesus added this in Luke 21. When you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by, or yet. The Greek word for commotions means disorder, confusion, and tumult. An expanded definition could include acts and effects of terrorism, such as bombings, but also demonstrations, protests, and riots. These things have almost arrived full force. But civil disobedience and related acts, including violence, will grow far worse than today's mere front edge. Now number five. The pattern of history is that famine always follows war. In Matthew 24, Christ also said, There shall be famines. This is reiterated in Revelation 6 when the black horse appears. Notice, he opened the third seal and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see you hurt not the oil and the wine. This picture is extreme, worldwide famine, a widespread lack of food beyond anything civilization has seen. Famines are increasing now. They are now far worse than most imagine. 24,000 people on earth starve to death every day, with this number steadily rising. Articles every day declare that the black horse is just over the horizon for all nations. Believe this. Number six is another inset. Mark's account of Jesus' list adds a word not found in Matthew or Luke. There shall be famines and troubles. The Greek word translated troubles means disturbance, that is, of water roiling, or of a mob, sedition, trouble. While this brings to mind riots, civil uprisings, protests, violent crime, and gang war, and these are connected to commotions, it also includes a range of difficulties that would come from floods, tremendous hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons, and other severe storms, all forms of roiling water. Mark's gospel indicates that these things will also grow worse. Now number seven. If war leads to famine, and it does, the resulting malnutrition invites a host of diseases. Jesus next said, there shall be pestilences, or diseases. The fourth seal reveals a pale horse. When he had opened the fourth seal, behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over, get this, the fourth part of the earth, one in every four people, to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. This horse is depicted as pale because it is sickly. It obviously represents disease, pestilence. The pale horseman's arrival portends that hundreds of millions, and not just in poor, underdeveloped countries, will perish through terrifying disease epidemics. The reference to death, the end result of disease, and hell, that's Hades, meaning the grave, makes this clear. The death toll now from disease around the world is staggering and growing. 
Disease will soon alter the course of history in a profound way. Horrific epidemics, the likes of which have never been seen, will strike the world's wealthiest nations. And coming pandemics will dwarf all that preceded them. The ensuing chaos will affect you and all of your loved ones. Next comes number eight. Revelation describes beasts of the earth. The prophet Ezekiel recorded, The sword is without, and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence, shall devour him. First, notice the similarity to Matthew 24 and Revelation 6. When one allows the Bible to interpret itself, a clear picture emerges every time. Ezekiel continues, Thus says the Lord God, As I live, surely they that are in the wastes shall fall by the sword, and him that is in the open field will I give to the beasts to be devoured, and they that be in the forts and in the caves shall die of the pestilence. The picture painted is almost too horrifying to contemplate. There is seen to be no way out. God permits no escape for those who will not turn to him. Many will try to flee, but will be unable. In fact, you saw one-fourth of all human beings will die from the horsemen and wild animals. And this is before things get much worse. Revelation 6-8 becomes one of the Bible's most powerful single passages on the entire subject of prophecy. Grasp the sheer awesome magnitude of the message here. The world to come will continue after this brief message. Discover more from David C. Pack. Visit our website, worldtocome.org. See the World to Come broadcasts. Read and order books, booklets, and articles, all free of charge. To continue learning about the topics covered in this broadcast, visit worldtocome.org today. Now back to David C. Pack. Now, condition number nine. Earthquakes and volcanoes have become regular in the news. The greatest period of activity in history is now underway. Jesus warned there shall be earthquakes in various places. Jesus says earthquakes would be here and there, but also that they would increase in frequency and intensity before his return. Luke adds, great earthquakes. The word translated great is megas, meaning big, great, high, large, loud, mighty, strong. Believe Christ. Mega earthquakes of awesome magnitude resulting in tremendous widespread destruction. This sets apart the time when earthquakes come more often and with more destruction from less frequent, relatively average quakes in previous periods of history. The same would be true of volcanic activity. Grasp what you have learned. In effect, Jesus has given an advance newscast, or the headlines, of events and conditions that are all around us and will grow much worse. Now, number 10. Jesus foretold that a worldwide effort to preach the true gospel would occur before the end. Notice. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. This means someone is preaching the gospel of the kingdom today, in our present age, because the end, close as it now is, has not yet come. Delivering the only true gospel to the world, the good news of the coming kingdom of God, is the work of God's church. While this commission began with the original apostles, the restored church of God continues it. The message and goal are the same, only the methods differ. Today, God's truth is available as never before. Vast thousands the world over are learning sound principles straight from their Bibles, helping them to live happier lives. The restored church of God offers more material more truth in writing and in video and audio form than in any time in the history of God working with mankind. And we offer it all without cost on our websites. We are the largest, the most extensive religious publishing operation in the world, now or ever. 
our websites collectively, rcg.org, realtruth.org, and worldtocome.org, are also the most extensive religious websites of any kind in the world, now or ever. Number 11 works alongside number 10. The world does not know God. It is unaware of the plan and purpose He is working out. Worldwide disobedience to His laws and rejection of His truths will cause horrible plagues to be poured out on a God-rejecting humanity. But the God of the Bible is a loving God. Before punishment, He always makes certain His watchman sounds the alarm to those in harm's way. Notice, Son of man, I have set you a watchman under the house of Israel. Therefore you shall hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die. If you do not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity or lawlessness. But his blood will I require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But you have delivered your soul, your life. Also read verses 30 to 33. God wants no one to have an excuse to say, I didn't know, or why didn't you tell me? It becomes our responsibility to warn all who will take heed of the seriousness and meaning behind world-shaking events and calamities soon to come on a sleepy, unsuspecting world. The prophet Isaiah wrote, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. The job of the World to Come program is to issue this warning while there is still time. Jesus makes a special promise in Revelation 3. Behold, I have set before you, his church in context, an open door, and no man can shut it. This door refers to the work God's church must carry out and complete. Now number 12. Revelation 17 describes a beast that ascends out of a bottomless pit and is ridden by a woman. Verse 12 shows that this beast involves ten kings who shall receive power and unite to bequeath it to a leader who will take the role of the beast. Comparing Revelation 13 and 17 with Daniel 2 and 7 brings full understanding of this beast and the system it represents. Numerous Old Testament scriptures also refer to this system. Combined, they explain a staggering and deeply sobering prophecy about latter-day events that will affect all peoples in your lifetime. This seventh, final, short-lived resurrection of the Holy Roman Empire is arising now in the heart of Europe. A united Europe is coming and lies just ahead. When it appears, the entire world will stand in shocked amazement. Revelation 13 describes a symbolic beast with seven heads, ten horns, and ten crowns, as well as a second beast with two horns. The first beast represents the Roman Empire, a political kingdom. The two-horned beast represents the headquarters of an influential prophetic woman or church that controls the first beast. Revelation 13 also describes the image and the mark of this beast. The prophet Daniel explained that the ten horns of Revelation 13 were ten successive governments which arose out of the Roman Empire and continue until Christ's second coming. Daniel states, the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings or governments that shall arise. Who are these ten kings? Start by recognizing they must be successive, not simultaneous, because they span a period from A.D. 476 until Christ's return. Obviously, no man can live this long, and neither has any single government empowered by Rome lasted this long. Briefly, beginning in A.D. 554, the Roman Empire became known as the Holy Roman Empire. Historians almost universally acknowledge that the Pope's crowning of Justinian signaled this change. Over the centuries, new rulers appeared and were crowned by the Pope. 
Charlemagne, A.D. 800, Otto the Great in 962, the Habsburg dynasty of Charles V in 1520, then Napoleon in 1805, with the sixth head being Garibaldi's united Italian head from 1870 to 1945. This revival of the Holy Roman Empire culminated in the defeat of Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini. Mussolini, after signing a secret agreement with the Vatican in 1929, united Ethiopia, Eritrea, and Italian Somaliland back to Italy in 1935. He declared this to be the Roman Empire reestablished. But there is another figure who appears on the world scene during this period of end-time events. This introduces number 13, which could easily be exchanged with 12 because these appear at or about the same time. The Revelation 17 woman riding the beast is a great false church, and the evidence of this is overwhelming. This explains holy attached to Roman Empire. Like one who rides a horse, camel, or elephant, the woman directs, controls, and guides the animal to go where she wants and do what she wants. This church is led by a leader the Bible calls the false prophet. The beast and false prophet will combine to rebuild and lead a powerful religious governmental system. Demons will bring the power to work miracles through this system. The false prophet is also called the man of sin, among other names. Paul wrote, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, the day of Christ, shall not come except there come a falling away first, a prophecy fulfilled in the late 20th century among God's people, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This religious figure will be revealed sometime before God's work is over. This final, world-charming false prophet will lead all nations to worship the beast. The deception will be so widespread that these men will actually deceive all mankind into fighting Christ at his return. Ponder all these verses. A regathering of power under two men is foretold to happen one more time. We're only half done. Do not miss the 13 remaining events and conditions that detail what will happen in our time. Read my booklets, Who or What is the Beast of Revelation, and Revelation Explained at Last. Until next time, this is David C. Pack saying goodbye, friends. This program was made available by Restored Church of God members and donors from around the globe. Explore our vast library of literature and other world-to-come programs, which are all made available free of charge. To order literature featured in this program, call toll-free 1-855-828-4646. That number again, 1-855-828-4646. 